Hey everybody, it's Michelle Caswell. Purely his. Look forward to seeing you guys all tonight and talking with you. Ooh, that's hot still. <laughs> Let's wait a minute for you guys to jump on. I know with Facebook it takes a few minutes, or at least a minute. There's my first person. Hey Shannon. <laughs> just texting with you not that long ago. <laughs> I'm excited about tonight. I keep thinking about all the things that the Lord has been telling me lately and yeah I'm just looking forward to, to sharing it and letting you guys know what's going on. Hey dad! <laughs> I'm like I'm surrounded by animals. I have a goat that I can see, a couple chickens, cat, the dogs are being watched right now at the other side of the house so that I don't hear them bark. <laughs> that was distracting last week. Hey, kitty. <laughs> Shannon, are you at home? Hey, Rebecca. Rebecca, it always takes me a second to figure out which, which Rebecca you are because you changed it to West and you used to have another last name. So it always like takes me a second like, wait, which Rebecca is that? So I always think you're a new Rebecca. Hey, Cammy, Birthday girl. We still have to go to birthday sushi lunch or sushi dinner. Hi, Sarah. <laughs> It's funny because nobody can really watch this without me knowing that they're on here. So some people would be like, oh, whoa, I didn't know that they could see me. But it like shows these little pictures and stuff. But yeah, when you're starting to get on here, tell us where you're watching from. Because it's always fun to see like what areas people are watching from. And I know sometimes people um, will watch this as the replay. So even on the replay, tell us where you watched it from because it's just fun to see where you're all at. Hey, Tanya. Cool. Well, I'm glad that you guys are all on here. I'm like, should I show you some of my animals? I'm going to do it. Let's see. How can I figure out how to turn this around? Oh, I think I know how. Here, you'll see what I'm surrounded with. Hi, kitty. There's Melody. Or as Cammie would say, Melody. Right, Cam? Let's see, there's a couple of chickens down there. I don't even know if you can see them in the shade. Baby chickens. I'm going to go over there under the tree scratching himself and uh, a couple of horses over there surrounded by the animals <laughs> last week I was uh, I was like on the back porch wow that looks weird with my arm right there um, I was on the back porch and my dogs I was like trying to keep my dogs quiet and they like can't <laughs> That's funny, Cammy. <laughs> like, emphasize the D. Um, no, anyways, it was, like, really annoying with them next to me. They were, like, whining and barking. And, yeah, it's uh, because of the river. We have, like, rafters that will go down, you know, frequently these days. And, um, you know, during this season. And the dogs just go crazy. And it's, like, it sounds like a dog pound in my house sometimes. Hi, Melissa from Wairika. Tanya, Southeast Portland, baby, my hometown. I was just talking to somebody through text messaging a few minutes ago, and she's like, look at the view from my room. And she took this picture, and I was like, you're by the waterfront, aren't you? Are you in downtown Portland? She's like, yeah. And I'm like, that's my hometown. And she didn't know that. So anyways, hi, Terry from Clackamas. Nice to see you on here. Central Point, Elaine Horn. Elaine Horn says, God and PH have changed my life, along with a few friends on fire for Jesus. Forest Grove. Grover Proud. Yay! Thank you, Elaine, for watching. I see you, Sean. Sean, are you still up in uh, Washington? I miss you. We gotta get together. There's somebody who wants us to pray over them, which I'll share with you through text message. Um, pretty awesome, because it's a relationship that you and I have been building with someone, and they are asking for our help. Hi, Destiny. I was actually praying for your family today. 
like I told you, I'm going to keep praying for them until your family is completely restored and until I see that picture on your Facebook that your family is completely reconciled. So just want you to know that. Hi, Amy. <laughs> I love it when you guys all get on here. All right, cool. Well, I want to just jump into what I wanted to talk about tonight. Um... Yeah, it's just been something that's been brewing in me for a while, and even though it's kind of scary to like step out in, I'm gonna I'm gonna do it anyways. Oh, Sean says no Washington grandsons here in Wairika. Oh, I thought you were in Washington this whole time. What? I had easier access to you than I thought. I was like giving you time alone with your uh, family because I thought you were in Washington. <laughs> well, that's cool. I'm glad that you're that close. Awesome. Oh, Shannon, I just love your little farm. Yep, Shannon house sat for us this weekend so we could go away with our grandsons and the rest of our, or not the rest of our family, but a big chunk of our family, so that was pretty cool. But yeah, it is quite the getaway for people who live in the city. So it's a lot of work if you live here full time, but it is a fun getaway when, uh, yeah, when you don't live like this. Hi, Mike, nice to see you. Cool. Okay. Well, I'm just gonna I'm gonna jump into what I feel like I want to share tonight. Um, so, a lot of times I will say things to the Lord, and I'm I'm sure you guys do this too. But it's like, ah, oh, I don't know what I'm doing. You know, especially like with running this ministry, it's like, yes, I know that the Lord gave this ministry, gave me like the vision of it, um, but He didn't really tell me like how to do a lot of things. And so I'm constantly like, you know, not constantly, but often I am feeling like insecure, like I don't have what it takes to run this ministry. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know how to run a business. I, uh, I just feel like at such a loss. And so I will go to him in my insecurity and I will ask him for, I'll ask him for help or I'll ask him like, uh, just tell me what to do. And so he does give me ideas and there's been a lot of times that he's given me ideas and I've tried them, but they really weren't the right timing. And so um, a lot of times, you know, the way that my mind works is I'm a visionary, so I see kind of more the end from the beginning. I hardly ever see, like, right now and, like, the steps on how to get there. And so sometimes when God gives me visions, I think, oh, my gosh, I'm supposed to do that right now. So then I try it right now, and it doesn't work because it really wasn't the timing. Um, and I forget to ask him that because I'm a really, like, I'm going to do it right now kind of person. So um, there's some things that God put on my heart, like, a long time ago, several years ago, and they keep coming back up. And I feel like now is the time. And so um, some, of the, some of the things that he has been showing me, he has to make things kind of elementary for me. He has to make things pretty simple for me because um, some of the things I'm called to do are, are pretty big. And so um, I was thinking about like this picture they kept giving me in my head. And, and the picture is basically the way we should lead our ministry is through teams to have several different teams leading in several different areas and that we're all at the same level and every person is is using their gifting their talent their skill set or their passion and each person is in you know the appropriate place and together we're moving this ministry forward together we're accomplishing um, what God is is putting on my heart to accomplish and and the thing is is that I have never been a one-man show like as far as like being a Christian okay I know I was in my past I was really independent but I'm not now I um I really know that I need other people to be alongside of me I totally am aware of my of my weaknesses and I'm also aware of my strengths and I really need people around me who's you know is strong you know people who are strong in areas that I'm weak and I need people you know people need me because I'm strong in areas that they're weak and so I just keep thinking about this whole team leadership thing I keep thinking about the body of Christ being the body of Christ and I have been feeling lately like the Lord is telling me activate the body of Christ you know get the body of Christ doing what the body of Christ was designed to do because when we start doing that we are all going to be a lot more happy. Like we have some serious God-given needs, needs that will never, ever go away. Whether you are serving God or not, you have God-given needs. And just a few of those is that you have a God-given need to be loved. You have a God-given need to be needed. You have a God-given need to belong. And if you think about the body of Christ and actually like being the body of Christ, 
that takes care of the the feeling like you need to belong you know that actually fulfills that need and when you start to belong you start to realize people need you and and in that you start to realize too that man these people actually love me also and so that is the kind of culture that i want to develop in purely his i don't i don't want to do it alone anymore not that i have been completely doing it alone but I've been doing a lot of it alone and I don't want to do it anymore. And the Lord is definitely telling me I need to stop doing that. Um, the, the progress in purely his is going really slow in my opinion. Um, and it could go a lot faster if we had people that were helping us move it forward. And so I've been asking the Lord like, ah, oh, you know, I know we need a lot of help, but what areas would, do we need help in? What does this look like? Blah, blah, blah. And one of the things that keeps coming to me is the number five and I'm like well that's kind of weird I just kind of keep seeing the number five in all different ways and so one of the ways that I'm seeing it is you know in purely his we have the five steps in purely his we do the five steps for the five months um, you know there's the five fold ministry that you know that God has put together and and the other thing that he was reminding me of is that I had this vision a long time ago. It was actually the night that I said yes to Jesus about doing purely his, but I saw a vision of me and four other women on this stage, each of us telling different parts of our story, but it was five distinct people, you know, up there. And I'm like, wow, that's kind of interesting. So he's bringing that back around like, Hey, there's this number five. Well, the number five in the Bible also means grace. And, um, Anyway, so there's just a lot of things like that. So I started looking at, you know, what are our needs? And instead of getting like super complicated and super like, uh, you know, just too detailed and too complicated to where it's going to take too long to start, you know, why not just pick five categories? So I started thinking like, what are the five like most needed things in our ministry? And um, so again, this is something that the Lord showed me like a long time ago. Um, probably like four years ago, we tried to start it. It didn't fly. It was just like all this work and it never like really went anywhere. And then, um, he gave it to me. He brought it up again and I tried it. We all had like a, not all, but we had like 10 of us at a coffee shop and I came there with my ideas and I was like, Hey, you know, I want to do this like volunteer structure. Like I had these kind of bubbles right now. And, um, and anyways, at that meeting, it went a totally different way. And it was weird because I thought, you know, oh, well, well, they must know more than me. So I'm just going to go with what they say because they're business people and, and I'm just going to trust them and go and do what they say. And that didn't work. And so anyways, the Lord brought it back up. And it's so simple and it's so like elementary that I wrote it on a poster board. See? I don't want to get too close. I want you to see all the names on it. But anyways, there was like five different categories and I started like, going, what are our main categories that we need help in? You know, we need the most help in business, discipleship, social media, prayer, and fundraising. So I was just thinking like business teams, discipleship team, social media team, prayer team, and, and fundraising. And I already have some people that are already plugged into those, um, those categories, but I just started thinking, you know what? I just need to keep it simple. I need to do exactly what the Lord showed me he showed me this very simple elementary you know for lack of better words um model and then i need to do what jesus did and go up to people and say hey you follow me you know and and really just start asking people like hey would you be willing to commit to like one of these teams even if it was just like one hour a week or two hours a week would you be willing to like commit to one of these teams and help us together as a body of christ move this ministry forward um yeah, I'm just done waiting and I'm done waiting for things to be perfect. I'm done waiting until like my insecurities go away or my fear goes away. I'm done waiting. I'm, I'm ready to do what the Lord's asking me to do. Even if I, you know, stumble along the way, even if I don't totally do it right. Um, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna keep moving forward. And so, um, so I really just wanted to ask all of you to be really like praying and not like prayerfully consider, which is what everybody says. And then you don't do a dang thing. That's not what I'm asking for. I'm asking that some of you would please step up, even if it was literally one hour a week concentrated on a few different tasks to help us move this forward. Um, 
you know, and, and if I mention something and you're like, Ooh, I, I think I could help on the business team, or I think I could help on that fundraising team or whatever. Um, with that, you'd be working with a team of people and together you would come up with some ideas and you would actually execute them. Um, what a lot of people do with me is they give me a lot of ideas. Um, but I don't need more ideas. I have tons of ideas. Um, I like people's input, but I kind of want to just say, hey, okay, cool. Will you do that? They'll say like, hey, you know what we should do for a fundraiser? We should do this, this, and we should do that. It's like, cool. Do you think you could do that? And then just like send the check to Purely Is because I don't have time for all of that. Um, so anyways, I'm looking for some doers. And um, like I said, we need so much help. The, I, I would say like, if I'm going to say like, oh, the main thing we need help with, if I were to say the most important thing, you know, it's probably the business side of it. Um, but fundraising, yeah, like, I don't know how to do all that stuff. So um, that that would be super huge, whether you put on fundraising events, whether you figure out how to, um, you know, get the people who are a part of our ministry to donate monthly, or if you know how to write grants, or you know how to... Um, whatever, I don't know. Um, or if you're a person who you're like, you know what, I don't have that kind of time. I'm super duper busy, but hey, I can donate to this ministry. You know, whatever you can do, I would love your help. And and being on a team like that, you're going to have a lot more access to me because I'm going to be pouring into every person who is who is in this team. You know, I'm going to try to to meet with you, to talk with you, to, to give input, to be praying for you. Um, but I would like to kind of come out of some of these teams so that I I can kind of stay in my lane and do what I'm called to do, which is making disciples that make disciples that make disciples. And one of the ways I want to do that is I want to speak on stages and I want to, you know, speak at prisons and rehabs and churches um, and really anywhere that we're, where, you know, somebody will let me. Um, that's what I want to do. And I want to, you know, write a little bit more. There's, I have a couple of books in mind that I want to finish and, um, and I just want to be able to, you know, pour into those that are pouring into others. So really like mentoring the leaders. But I don't have that much time because I'm kind of bogged down with these other things. So I really felt like the Lord told me to come on here and just be vulnerable and tell you how much help that I need. Uh, how much help he needs to like move this vision forward that is actually from him. And to ask that you would just, you know... I don't want to ask you to prayerfully consider. If your heart is jumping at all, if you have any skills, any talents, any gifting, or any desire to help, and especially if God is kind of giving you like a picture in your mind, like, you know what? I think I could help with this. I think I could maybe call churches and see if they would like have Michelle come and speak. Or, you know what? I would be willing to write thank you letters to donors or I don't know, whatever comes to your mind that you think you could, you know, help us out with, maybe you could private message us and just maybe just tell us a few things. I know a lot of you have been so awesome and have come to me like Mercedes, I see you watching like Mercedes come to me and like, man, I'll do anything. I'll, I'll turn myself into a pretzel for you. Like I'll, I'll clean bathrooms. I'll do whatever. I'll, I'll do anything you want me to do. What do you want me to do? And the thing is, is how I get so overwhelmed or I've been to such an overwhelmed place that I'm like, ah, oh, I have 1500 things going through my head right now. I don't know where to place you. And so anyways, I, I just need to, um, kind of process through some of that stuff. And so, you know, now I'm starting to see that we do have, um, we do have specific jobs. We do have certain things that we really need help with. And so I feel like now that I'm kind of in this season of plugging people in, I feel like I could probably answer that question a little bit better, especially if you told me, um, maybe what some of your gifting is or your talents or even some past jobs, or what do you dream of doing? Um, keeping in mind that we're still a, a new ministry, but we're going to be a worldwide ministry. I already know that. And so if you think of a worldwide ministry, think of all the positions that are available. And once we're to that place of a worldwide ministry, even before that, we're going to have enough money to pay for staff. But at this point, we don't. So maybe you could think of something you really want to do um, within our ministry. And even if we don't have that available right now, you could do something on a smaller scale to get us to that place and basically work yourself into a job, knowing that at some point we have every intention to pay people a really good salary that will include health benefits and all of that. Like, I don't think that because you're a Christian, you should work for less or that you should volunteer your whole entire life. You 
you know, if you're really looking at it like wanting a position with Purely His, wanting a career, then then know that that those opportunities are going to be available. But we have to start somewhere. And so um, things are a little messy and a little pff, flies. Um, things are a little messy and they're a little bit, um, you know, kind of chaotic right now. Not chaotic. That's a weird word. Um, that sounds too extreme or too dramatic, but, but it is a little bit messy right now. I do need a little bit of help with some organization. I do need a little help with some direction, but not just direction. I need people who will actually do the work. So if that is you, or if you know somebody who you think would be perfect to, to help us out in some of these areas, please send them to us. Um, and also know that I'm probably going to come after a few of you. I know I already have to ask you specifically, like, could you help lead this thing? Or do you think you could be on this team? Um, because once all of us are in our different places and we're in our own lane, then I can be in my own lane and together we will move this ministry forward and accomplish so much. Like this is supposed to be a discipleship movement. So it's time to move. And, um, yeah, I had a lot of people, um, not a lot of people, but I have had some pretty like significant people in my life who have told me like, oh, you can't do this until you do that. Well, you can't do this until you do that. And I'm like, you know what? I've been winging this whole thing. So I really feel like this little chart thing or whatever, this is the way to go for now. This is how I run a ministry. This is how I run a business because I don't know what else I'm doing. I didn't go to college for this stuff. So I'm winging it. I'm figuring it out. And um, I do know that we are just now kind of bringing on some people who know more business stuff. So I'm sure I'm sure they're going to figure out a better way to do it. But this is how I'm going to do it for now. I do feel like it's from the Lord. And um, I also feel like it's from the Lord that he wants to meet your deepest God-given needs by helping you to feel loved, to feel needed, and to belong. I'll tell you right now, I need you. <laughs> I need you, and I will totally love you if you will help us, and then that will help you to belong. <laughs> I'm just serious. I'm, I'm just being funny. Um, but, I'm, but I'm actually serious. Like, belonging to something like what we're doing, belonging to a team of people who are sold out to Jesus is... Um, is awesome and and getting to be with us like on this type of team you're going to see so many lives change like it's amazing from where i sit i am constantly hearing stories of people's lives that have been forever changed so um getting to go on this ride with me you're going to see those same things which always increases your faith it increases your joy and it helps you to know like man i'm a part of something that's literally changing lives so if you want to be a part of something like that please let me know like I said, let me know what you might be interested in. Um, let me know maybe how much time you have to offer. And um, and like I said, even one hour a week, you can accomplish a lot in one hour if you're just going after like some certain, um, you know, some certain tasks that you're in charge of. So um, I'm going to switch over these uh, um, comments here really quick to see if there's any of you who want to say anything or ask any questions. We uh, just recently lost the person who was in charge of our social media. And so I'm back to doing it myself. And um, I, we do have some people that send us in, um, you know, posts or whatever that I can use for that. But um, we are looking for somebody who could be a social media manager. And that's a little bit more skilled. Um, we're looking for someone who is younger, you know, 30 or younger. I'm looking for someone who really understands like Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, whatever. Um, and even if they can only help us, you know, post one post a day or every other day or something, we want our social media to be powerful. We want our social media to be like a stage that we minister from. And so we need that to be a uh, really create a really creative person and somebody who really understands it. So if you know anybody like that, like maybe it's even an intern, um, at a college that would be willing to do something like that, um, that would be amazing. Um, but yeah. I'd like to hear from you guys. Is there an area of our ministry that you're thinking, um, you know, like, wow, I, I would love to serve in that area. And, and keep in mind that just because you would start serving in that area, like just because you would be willing to, um, you know, maybe make phone calls for us or, or write thank you cards for us or something like that, something that might be like a smaller job, just know that that you may start there, but you may end up speaking on a stage someday with me, or you may be one of the authors that's gonna, you know, have a, a book published that we're gonna help you sell, or or maybe you're going to be in charge of our, um, you know, our 
our whatever you'd call it, our, our nationwide ministry. I mean, at some point we're going to be so big, we're going to need people, you know, possibly living, you know, in other countries. We're, we're going to, we're going to have so many opportunities. So please know that just because you start in one place doesn't mean that's where you're always going to be. Sandy said, God gave me the five aspects of life. That's super cool to know that the number five means grace. God has given us a lot of grace and you are truly being obedient. Love your honesty. <laughs> Thank you. Hi, Beverly. I see you're watching. Yay. And Amy says, I've been trying to get on this to watch, but it keeps saying error loading. So weird. I wonder why. Oh, gosh. Dad, you're watching from under the hood of the truck? Uh-oh. That's probably not a good sign. That usually means something's broke down. <laughs> I'm just scrolling up here and seeing. I don't want to miss what people are saying. Hey, Carol. Haven't seen you for... Well, actually, I did see you not that long ago. I saw you at the women's retreat. The Wapato women's retreat. <laughs> Debbie says, am I the only one seeing a frozen screen? Can anybody answer that? Are you guys having problems with the, um, with the connection? Shannon says, I am in for the discipleship team and supporting other leaders. Yes. And the discipleship team, part of what we're thinking about with that, and, and we actually tried this before. We did this a few years ago, probably three, four years ago or something. But we're going to have some area directors and those area directors are going to be in charge of um, helping the leaders of the groups in that area get what it is that they need. So if they need training, if they personally need mentoring, if they need more books, you know, whatever it is, if, if they want me to like come and speak at their church and help them fill their groups, if they need, you know, whatever it is that they need, um, the area directors are going to help with that. And we were kind of thinking, I kind of came to me this morning thinking like, Hmm, what if we had a team that did that? So what if we had like, so for instance, maybe Shannon and somebody else could be in charge of the Southern Oregon area and together they could do that as a team. So they can just make sure that they're available to be able to minister to those group leaders in that area. So it's like disciples, making disciples, making disciples and just making sure they have what they need. So um, that's one of the things that we're going to launch here really soon. And I have a few ideas of people that I'm going to talk to. So yeah. Mercedes says, I've definitely been thinking about doing a salsa standoff fundraiser. A salsa standoff fundraiser. I have no idea where to start, but I will start looking into that. Very cool. Will that be so a salsa standoff? Or I don't know, maybe you didn't mean to say off. But I would think that would be like who could eat the hottest salsa? Is that what that is? A salsa standoff? <laughs> That would be cool to do some sort of fundraiser, like maybe maybe you'd like do it and like a percentage goes to Purely His and right next to it, it's like you have the Purely His brochures or something like that. Um, maybe like at the fair or the, um, what do you call that thing? The art hop because making salsa is an art. Um, maybe one of those like newer businesses like Level Up would help you to, you know, do something like that just to drive traffic there. Um, or even the Christian bookstore, the one that's uh, now carrying our stuff. Hi, Beverly. Okay, so everyone's saying not frozen. Okay, so hopefully Debbie got that fixed. So it says, Sean says, Terry, Lucas, and Chico needs purely his groups. Are you in one? Wait. Okay, I don't know what that means. Are you asking if we have any groups in Chico yet? We do not. I have gotten a few phone calls from Chico, a few phone calls from San Francisco, a few phone calls from Sacramento, from LA, people like asking for groups. Um, that is the most common um, question I get. So if the phone rings for Purely His or, or you know, we get messages like through um, Facebook and stuff, the most common question people ask is, hey, do you have a group in our area? Do you have a group in Montana? Do you have a group in Idaho? Do you have a group? I mean, I've gotten so many calls and I have to be like, no, sorry, but you can start one. So eventually we're going to start um, kind of targeting certain areas. So like Chico or whatever, if we keep getting phone calls from certain areas, we're going to target those areas and go to the churches and say, hey, you have people in your area that are wanting this type of group. Would you be willing to start a group like this? We'll come, we'll train you, we'll support you, you know, all that stuff. We got the tools, training, and support. 
My dad says, charging AC for Monday. Oh, got it. Yeah, it's hot here, Dad. It's like over 90. <laughs> I don't know how hot it is, but yeah, it's at least over 90. Mercedes says, discipleship team, organizing, fundraising, speaking, writing. Yay. I totally have you pegged for that discipleship team. Just want you to know. And yeah, yeah, definitely the speaking and writing. I already know you're going to be an author. I prophesy that. I already know that. Beverly Neal says, ho. I'm pretty sure you meant hi, though. <laughs> I have a feeling. <laughs> Destiny said, I will gladly help even in the little tasks. I don't have a car, so pray. Because I can make calls, etc. Very cool. Thank you, Destiny. I will write your name down. And um, I have a couple other people that are going to help me, like, plugging people into like the right spot. So um, we'll probably reach out to you even if it's through Facebook and ask you a few more questions, you know, about like um, what you could do or, or, or give you some different options and maybe you could choose, but that would be awesome. Thank you, Destiny. Shannon said, awesome, Mike, let's talk. I have no idea what you're talking about. What did Mike say? Elaine said, you had, you had me at Purely His. I am down for group marketing and sales one or two hours yay that's awesome yeah that's a that's a huge one is that that marketing piece like what we have done so far because we don't really have the money to market like we have spent money on getting the website and things like that but um but we sorry i got distracted and got a fly on me <laughs> um but we haven't had the money to like, you know, do a marketing campaign or whatever. We do have a couple of people who um, we just recently met and um, they're, they're interested in putting together like some ideas for marketing. Um, but for the most part, it's just been word of mouth and social media because it's free. So um, yeah, it'd be nice to have some people helping us with the marketing part. Discipleship team, yay, Mike. That's actually what, yep. That's what I was thinking for you also. Yes, we definitely need some some guys. And with that, you might want to consider, like, is there somebody um, that that you love that's, like, within our ministry, like, another guy that you could, like, maybe see yourself partnering with um, to be on that discipleship team just in case, like, wow, what if we get, you know, a few guys that call and, and they need help, then maybe you guys can split that, you know, split that up or whatever. So that would be awesome. Thank you. You know, our whole ministry is about discipleship, but we have to figure out, like, how do we get money for it? And then we have to figure out how do we market it, like, through social media or or how do we put the business stuff together behind the scenes so that we're um, making sure that we can handle the phone calls or making sure that we're collecting the data right and all that stuff. Like, um, so, yeah, every team is is really, really needed, but it's all about discipleship. It's it's making disciples that make disciples that are all in with Jesus and getting unstuck from anything in the way of that. So, you know, it's really important that we all lean on each other and that we all realize like, hey, we all have strengths and we all have we all have weaknesses. So, oh, Beverly says he can also play his guitar and sing. How's that for a mother's love? That's cute. Yep, he has actually played his guitar and sang for us, I think, a couple of times. I think we had him do that for a couple of different events that, that we've done. Yeah, yeah, pretty sure. That's cute, though. I'm always doing that with my son, too. Like, no matter how big my son gets, he's always going to be my little guy. And I'm going to, you know, keep, you know, promoting him and all that stuff. So, that's cool. A mother's love is awesome. Yeah, we, um, we actually have something really big going on tonight as soon as I get off here. Um, so one of our daughters has been um, having some issues, and um, I've been working with, uh, you know, getting her unstuck from some things. We're actually going through the Purely His workbook just one-on-one, -on -one, and we've been, you know, praying some different things out. Um, but I've noticed, like, some real resistance in some areas, which I have now um, discovered that there's just, like, some serious like demonic stronghold set up there and the other night she was ready to go all in with Jesus um even though she had massive amounts of doubts and different things like that but so we I was like so let's do it right now and she's like what right now I was like yeah right now let's do this and so anyways we're praying stuff out blah 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 and anyways Matt and I prayed over her with with her praying with us for over two and a half hours the other night and it was really intense and um 
and I didn't feel like it was like fully finished. And so I called in reinforcements because even though I know I can pray and I know my husband can pray and all of that, you know, we need to realize sometimes that other people are more gifted than we are in certain areas. Other people have more of an anointing, more of a grace on their life in certain areas than we have. And um, we can never be like, no, I've like arrived now. I don't need any help. And so anyways, I called... Um, uh, couple of friends of mine, a married couple, and they are driving out here an hour, you know, one way to um, help us, you know, pray over her again tonight and just make sure that it is finished. So, um, yeah, if you all could be, you know, just be praying for us at seven o'clock. I don't know what time it is right now, but at seven o'clock is when we're going to be praying over her. So it'll be, um, you know, this married couple of mine, of, of my, you know, that are friends of ours and me and Matt and then our daughter. And so if you guys could pray, for breakthrough tonight that's what she needs she needs a supernatural breakthrough and um yeah and yeah and also if you could just always keep in mind too that because of what i do for a living <laughs> um we have a lot of spiritual warfare that goes on in our family. Um, sometimes it's just a distraction from the enemy. And sometimes it's just a way that the enemy just tries to push me back um, so that we won't go forward. And so if you could please pray for um, mostly for our kids. We have four kids, Stefan, Jordan, Kirsten, and Kaylee. And um, if you could all be praying for them, that God would, um, you know, protect them spiritually, that God would, um, you know, surround him with his favor like a shield, that if God would, um, you know, help them with his keeping power. You know, I know I have a couple of kids who struggle with addictions. And so um, if you could just pray for total freedom and that God would um, just have his keeping power around them so that they wouldn't go backwards. Um, just like I didn't. So, um, but anyways, that takes prayer. And so I'm not above needing prayer or needing um, that, that support and that encouragement from people who um, have more skills or have uh, more of a grace in a certain area than I do. So um, anyways, yeah, I, uh, I don't know why I went off on that whole thing. Probably just to show you like an example of the fact that the body of Christ is so needed um, that that we all need each other and and it's awesome when we can come through for each other like I'm so grateful like they're gonna drive you know two hour round trip just come out here and pray for a couple of hours with us and and really help to protect our family and protect our our home our property and um, and the mission that God has us on and so um, yeah just Try not to forget me when you're praying. <laughs> Try not to forget me. Try not to forget Matt and, and our kids and, and this ministry. Like, I really believe that it is it is our prayers that are really going to move this ministry in the direction it's supposed to go. It is what is going to provide the finances for us. It's what's going to give me the wisdom to know, like, who I'm even supposed to pick for these different teams. Um, it's going to give me uh, creativity so that I can come up with new ideas for how to make disciples in a way that's, you know, more effective than what we've been doing. Um, and I just... Yeah, need your help in that area. Definitely need your prayers in that area. So thank you for all of you who do pray. And thank you in advance for all, the, all of you who are going to pray. Um, it takes a team of people. It takes the body of Christ. So um, again, we have a lot of needs. Um, and so, yeah, consider helping us. Whatever you can do, literally one hour, two hours, 10 hours a week, 10 hours a month, anything. No job is too small. Um to, I'm just to the point where I have so many small jobs and so many big jobs. I just really can't. I just really can't. I can't do it. <laughs> I can't do it without you. And I'm not supposed to do it without you. And I don't want to do it without you. I love doing it with you. So if you want to be on my team, please reach out to us through private message or do it right here. And I'll go back um, in a couple of days and kind of write down everyone who is saying yes. And then I'm going to reach out to you. So, um, but if you want to private message me like your phone number and and some of those details just to make sure that I don't miss you. I do not want to miss the fact that you're saying you want to volunteer. And keep in mind, again, some of these volunteer positions are going to turn into pay positions at some point. So be praying for the money for us to have that to be able to pay some salaries. So I know there's some people right now that are strongly, strongly considering um, making this their full-time job. Um, so we're going to need the money to be able to pay for that. Um, so 
let's get some work done. So hopefully God will start blessing that and we'll start getting some money in and we'll be able to do that. So anyways, I'm rambling now. And um, so I'm going to go. But um, I love you all. Thank you for tuning in. Please share this video with people that you think would be blessed by it. All the hearts, all the shares, all the likes, all that stuff helps us to push it out into the community more. So I really appreciate any of your help because you are our marketing team right now. So even if you don't sign up for a team, if you're watching right now and you have liked this or you have shared it, then you are officially part of the Purely His marketing team. So anyways, thank you all so much. and. Um, I'm going to go get ready to pray. So, um, yeah, I love you guys. Bye.